and so 1.2 for the extension. So these questions are a little bit more challenging. Let's start with the first question. A water tank in the shape of a cube has sides of 3 metres. Each side is measured with an uncertainty of 1%. What is the absolute uncertainty in the final volume? Now we're dealing with a cube of base width and height of A. So A cubed would be the final volume because it's base times height times width. So the first thing we have to do is, as always, work out the rule that we need to be using for our certainties, for our, un our uncertainties. We need to calculate the actual value and then we need to deal with the uncertainties. So, what is the rule that we're using? We're working out a value of a to the power of 3. Okay, so to work out the uncertainty in the volume, our delta v, we must times our uncertainty in a by 3. Okay, because that's the rule we use when we are using a power. You multiply the power times the uncertainty. Now the uncertainty in A is 1%, so multiplied by 3 would give you a percentage uncertainty in the volume of 3%. Bingo. Now, the rule is done. The actual value is 27, which is 3 times 3 times 3. 3 or 3 cubed equals 27. So now we've got our actual value. Let's find the final uncertainty. I've kind of jumped the gun a bit already by finding the 3%. But now that we have the 3%, we need to find the absolute uncertainty. So it would be 3 over 100 to convert the uh, percentage into a fraction times 27, which is our actual value which gives us 0.81. Now it asks for the answer without a unit to two significant figures. So that sounds about right. And that sound is the sound of, believe it or not, a snoring cat. Okay, so next question. A pyramid as a square base of side x and h as height. The volume of the pyramid is given by this expression. Volume equals side x squared times the height h over 3. Now we know that the percentage uncertainty of v is 5% and h is 3%. So let's work out the percentage uncertainty of x. The first step would be to make x the subject of the equation. So if we re rearrange, x becomes equal to the square root of 3v over h. Another way of writing it, the same thing would be to write brackets 3v volume over height to the power of a half. Now, we don't need quite as much information as usual. We, um, we do need to start with our rules. We don't need to bother with our values, but we can go straight to finding our uncertainties. What are the rules here? Well, you have some multiplication, or rather some division, and you also have a power. So let's review those rules. When you are multiplying or dividing, the rule is to add the percentage uncertainties. When you have a, an object, an object, if you have a variable to a power n, then the rule is that the uncertainty in the total would be equal to the power times the uncertainty of the variable. So in this case, 
let's start with that. Our power is a half. So the uncertainty in x would be equal to a half times, we have a division, so we're going to add them together. We're going to add the percentage uncertainty in v, which is 5%. And we're going to add that to the percentage uncertainty in h, which is equal to 3%. which gives us a percentage uncertainty of a half times 8, which is equal to 4%. Here we have a new question, which is very similar to the last one. We have this time a volume V of a cone of height H and radius R, given by the expression V equals pi r squared h over 3. This time you're given an uncertainty of 5 in V and 2 in R. What is the percentage of uncertainty in H? So the first thing we have to do is make H the subject of the equation. And here we have it. H is now equal to 3 V over pi r squared. Now let's review the rules. Once again, we have a square, so the uncertainty in r squared is going to be the uncertainty of r multiplied by 2, because we have a power. And then we're going to have to divide, and because we're dividing, we just need to add the percentage uncertainties. So, percentage uncertainty in h would be equal to the percentage uncertainty in V, which is 5%, plus 2 times the percentage uncertainty in R. That gives a total of, well this ends up being 4%, so our answer is 9%. Okay, here we are adding because there's a division and we are multiplying by 2 because there's a power. Okay, this question. The radius of a balloon is measured to be 2, oops, 20, sorry, plus or minus 1 centimetre. What is the percentage of uncertainty in the calculated volume? You might have had to um, look up the formula. The formula for the volume of a sphere is two thirds, sorry, four thirds pi r cubed. These two numbers are constants, so we don't really need those two. Let's have a look at what we're being asked to do. What is the percentage uncertainty in the volume? Now, this means that you don't actually have to work out the final volume. But let's have a look at the actual rules that we're using. The rules that we're using are about the r cubed. The constants, they don't, they're not relevant. So, what is the rule? The percentage uncertainty in r3 cubed will be equal to 3 times the percentage uncertainty in r. So, our final answer would be the percentage uncertainty in the volume would be equal to 3 times the percentage uncertainty of the radius. Now, what is the percentage uncertainty of the radius? Let's have a look here. Percentage uncertainty would be weak, equal to 1 over 20 times 100, because that would be the percentage uncertainty calculated for this value. This gives a total of 5%. So now we have our percentage uncertainty in R. Our final percentage uncertainty would be 3 times 5%, which is 15%. I don't know why I did the percentage there, but anyway. Okay, hopefully that's understood. You work out the percentage uncertainty in R. 
and then you multiply it by 3 because it's a cube. More of the same. This time our equation involves the square root. The period of oscillation, t, of a pendulum of length l is given by 2 pi square root of l over g. If the uncertainty in g is 2% and the uncertainty in l is 6%, what is the percentage uncertainty in T? Again, remember our rules. Our rules are multiplication and division. You add the percentage uncertainties. And when you have a power, the percentage uncertainty in your amount is equal to the power. Let's put an N here. Would be the power times the percentage uncertainty in your initial value. So the percentage uncertainty in T is equal to, we get 2 pi, it's irrelevant, a half times the percentage uncertainty in L, which is 6, plus the percentage uncertainty in G, which is 2, which gives half times 8, which gives 4%. Next question. The lengths of the sides of a room are estimated as 10, 4 and 3 metres, each with an uncertainty of 10%. What is the absolute uncertainty in the volume of the room? Give your answer in metres cubed to one significant figure. So here we do have to follow our little routine. First, review the rules. Secondly, work out the actual value. And thirdly, deal with the uncertainties. So what are the rules? The lengths of the side are going to be used to work out a volume. So volume in this case, it's not a cube. So we do have to consider base times height times depth or breadth, or whichever one. Anyway, it's the three sides. So we're dealing with a multiplication of three variables. So the rule would be to add the percentage or the fractional uncertainty of each one. So it would be delta B plus delta H plus delta D. That will be the uncertainty in the volume. Now, careful, because this is actually incorrect so far. What we mean to say is that the fractional uncertainty in the volume is equal to the fractional uncertainty in B, the fractional uncertainty in H, and the fractional uncertainty of D. It's getting late, and I'm going to start making mistakes, so I have to concentrate. So that is better. Now, Next step, so we have our rules, we need to work out our value. So what is the actual value of the volume? Well, the volume is going to be equal to 10 times 4 times 3, which is equal to 120 meters cubed. That is your actual volume. So that's the second thing done. And now we're going to work out the uncertainties. Now what information are we given? We're given the uncertainties of the sides by percentage. So we're going to adapt this initial rule to the percentage uncertainty in volume is equal to the percentage uncertainty in all the sides. Let me write that out. Okay, so it's the, the addition of the three percentages of uncertainties of the three sides. So because the percentage uncertainty of those sides are all 10%, our total percentage uncertainty in the volume would be equal to 30%. How do we work out the final uncertainty? Well, you can either... Use your calculator, 
in percentage mode. Made a little bit more space here. So basically, your uncertainty, your absolute uncertainty in volume over 120 times 100 would be equal to 30%, giving you a final answer of approximately 40 meters cubed. The actual real value is 36, but to one significant figure, which is what they're asking, it would be 40. Right, next one. The density of a solid sphere is measured with a percentage uncertainty of 5%. The radius of the sphere is 4 plus or minus 0 0.2. What is the percentage uncertainty in the mass? Okay, so you're going to have to figure this out using some equations that you've had to look up. And that's the biggest challenge because the question hasn't given you the formula. So hopefully you've worked out that the density of the volume and the symbol for density is rho. Density for, um, is mass over volume. And then how do we work out volume? Well, the formula for volume is equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed. So hopefully you were... You got that far. You managed to find those two equations. Don't worry if you didn't. It is a bit of a challenge. But that's why it's called an extension assignment. Um, what is the percentage uncertainty in the mass of the sphere? Well, basically, using this equation, mass equals density times volume. And then the volume is equal to the following. So let's expand mass equals rho, which is the symbol for density, times volume, which is equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed. Now we've got that, let's figure out what our uncertainty in the mass is fully. Well, the percentage uncertainty in r is, oh, we don't know yet because we're given the absolute uncertainty. So you would actually have to work out the percentage uncertainty in R, oops, percentage uncertainty in R is equal to 0 0.2 over 4 times 100, which gives us, which gives us 5%. That's the percentage uncertainty in R using those values. So now we've got the percentage uncertainty in R, which is 5%, but it's to the power of 3. And hopefully you remember the rule now. The rule is that you multiply the power times the percentage uncertainty. Now, that gives you 15%. So let's work out our percentage uncertainty now in density. Well, luckily... That's given here as 5. So you don't have to do anything else. Let's just put it all the way down here. 5%. So what's the total percentage uncertainty? Well, you are multiplying density times r cubed. So the total would be 20%. And there we go. That's our answer. And the last of the crazy questions. Experimental data has shown that P, whatever that is, is equal to G, which is acceleration due to gravity, but that doesn't matter right now. G, A squared over U cubed. A lot of things to do here. Where G is a constant. If the percentage uncertainties in H and you are A and B respectively. So H is A and U, the percentage uncertainty is B. We have to remember their percents. 
or percentages. Uh, what is the percentage uncertainty in P? Firstly, interesting, as you become more and more challenged in maths, you'll find that questions have less and less numbers and more and more letters, to the point where sometimes you have no numbers at all, which is crazy. And this is one of those questions. So, um, how do we sort this out? Well, first think about the rule that you have to apply. Again, just like in the other seven questions, pretty much, you have a power. So, the total percentage uncertainty in h squared would be 2 times a, which is the percentage uncertainty of h. What is the percentage uncertainty in u cubed? Well, you'll have to multiply the percentage uncertainty in u by 3. So it gives you 3b. Now you are dividing h squared by u cubed. So you have to add these two percentage uncertainties. And that gives you 2a plus 3b.